Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, you're finding us in the middle of a conversation. Degree versus success. Very quickly, the World Economic Forum says 65% of children entering primary school will end up in jobs that do not yet exist. Now, um, let me introduce you to one more gentleman here, Donald. Donald, um, give us your name, your experience when it comes to job hunting, how you feel about this entire scenario. Uh, my name is George Donald. Uh, I graduated in 2012 with a bachelor's in procurement and supply chain management. Mm -hmm. I've done CIPS to the fifth level. I'm remaining with one. And currently I'm stocked in a master's due to financial constraints. So you had begun a master's? I had begun, but I had to stop. Uh, the job hunt has not been easy. And even up to now, I'm still hunting for a job. Mm -hmm. uh, with, all those with all things those you've documents, mentioned. sometimes you'll be told you don't qualify. Other interviews will go, you'll be told you are overqualified. Now, I've never understood the truth, where they lie. Uh, I've gone for coaching. I've gone for CVs, the way the lady was saying. The training the for CVs. Training for CVs. You've done everything. We've done, like, everything. But still, we are still hunting for a job. Mm -hmm. And you know, surviving without a job, and yet you are a man, is so hard. Yeah. You have to go and do the odd jobs cooked mandazis for people along the streets to make sure that you survive, pay your fee. Let me just talk about an experience that happened like th three weeks ago. I was passing somewhere, then there were these primary kids, students, they know me very well. I heard them talk behind my back that uh, education is overrated. Why is it that if we are, we, are, we are being struggling here with our homeworks and whatever, mm. And yet a person like Donald that we know very well doesn't have a job. Oh, they know your story. Yeah, they know. They know because they are my neighbors. Mm. Wow. So it really broke my heart. Eh? Mm. But uh, in all this... But do you think they struggling. had a point? Education is overrated? According to me at this point, eh, I still believe my papers have a value. My papers have a value and I know one day they will show up. So, but according to them, you know, at the primary level, they are seeing as if they are being pushed eh? okay. to do these things. So now you are doing odd jobs. Now I'm if doing anyone odd calls jobs. you now and tells you, Kuja utfanye kibarua kidogo, you'll just run yes, into it. Yes, That's I, how have, you I have to survive. Mm. So I have to do anything that comes along my All way. All right. Um, okay. Christine. Christine, um, do, you, do you also agree with what George has said that education is overrated? Because he's not, he said he values his papers he, he despite values, what those uh, he kids said. He values his papers, yes. But what the kids said that education is overrated given that they've seen Donald George's experience, right? So, and here's the thing every single year with our prestigious universities, we're churning out thousands, hundreds of thousands of graduates. So, you take, for example, one course at random international relations that has, for example, 500,000 um, students graduating from this one university. But the question is, why are, wh where are they going to go to? Where are they going to go to? Is it a failure on our education system as well when you have 500,000 graduates all graduating? with one degree, because they're going to go where? Is it a sabotage not only to the youth, but to their parents? Do you, do you, how, do you, how do you think our parents feel after paying that education? So, um, well, uh, you see First, begin by introducing yourself <laughs> and, and, um, and your situation. Uh, I'm Christine Modoni. I'm a digital marketer with the Jujali program. Um, let me say, personally, it's been a tough, tough journey, getting a job. I could say I finally got a job like two months ago and the reason why I was able to secure this entry level job is because I went through a program where I was able to um, get uh, training in terms of uh, may, maybe learning how to s customize or maybe show out my achievements and my skills. And the one thing that I didn't get in the when I was in school or maybe through my education journey is how to package yourself as a brand or as a person. You see, we go through all this training. Personally, I've done a diploma in computer programming and it took me a long time to secure a job in that field. And I had to, to go through a, a special training to be able to get a job. <laughs> A special so training see, outside of formal education. Yes, outside of formal education. So uh -huh. do you feel as if um, our education, our schools are sabotaging young people and frustrating parents? If you already, all these years of schools, you still have to go do this one extra course that you feel might help you get that job. 
in a way, yes. Because you see, at times when you explain to your parent, I have to go do like an extra course out of what I went or I did in uh, university, they don't understand. Because you see, I've paid, or as a parent, they feel like I've paid so much for you, or I paid a lot of a, a huge amount of fees for you to go through university, and you want to go through maybe an extra training for you to be able to secure a job. So I feel like. Um, Parents get a bit frustrated when they see uh, their kids at home. There was a meme that was going around of uh, a cow in a sitting room. Mm. And someone mentioned, this is what my parents see when I'm in the house. They don't understand why you're still in the house and you have a degree or you have your diploma and they don't see, or they don't see the value of their money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's bring in uh, Waidera Gaither, who's the chair of Youth Enterprise um, within Kepsa. And you can tell us this. A lot of the discussion we're having right now are about people who have papers, who are within urban areas. But there's a bigger issue with young people who are in rural areas, and we need to address that today. What are your thoughts on that? Because we might have solutions for people who are within reach of a capital city or, or you know, the hub of a county. But what do those who are out there far from uh, any, any major town, what is their hope? What can you tell them today? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. My name is, as you said, Waidera Gaido. And um, as an individual, I'm a youth enterprise specialist, but um, I'm in KEPSA as the chair of the KEPSA Youth Agenda. And as Architecture Lee has said, um, the Youth in Enterprise Forum. Um, I would like to uh, chime in into the debate a bit that education is not about getting a job. Education is about earning knowledge. It's about getting knowledge and then taking that knowledge and deciding what you want to do with it. Do you want to create jobs, that is as an entrepreneur, or do you want to be employed? But that, that education is meant to give you the knowledge to do something, make the world a better place, simply put. And I'd like to, um, there's, this, there's a question on uh, whether entrepreneurship is a solution. And I've been hearing people saying that uh, everyone is not an entrepreneur. That is true. Because you don't need too many entrepreneurs to create jobs. Look at the person who founded Coca-Cola. How many jobs have they created for over 100 years? Look at Google, look at Facebook, look at Chandaria, look at Bitcoin, and we can name so many others. A handful of businesses can actually create thousands of jobs. And that is why we are saying that we need the government to create an enabling environment mm -hmm. that actually accelerates mm -hmm. the creation or expansion of new jobs. I want to give you examples, for example. We've got very many young people in university and those and postgraduates who have got amazing innovations. I just met uh, a team of young people who are making organic shoes. I'm sure you know organic fashion has become uh, a very uh, a thing, yeah. yes. And uh, they are making shoes out of pineapple waste. You've got young people who are doing uh, mechos out of uh, plastic waste. That's you, beautiful, but how will that put food on their table, clothes on their table? Because they're already selling. They're selling. They have a market. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's about markets. I have a sister who started making clothes. She was still in campus, and she would wear a post on Instagram. Today, she has a label. She's employing people. So what we are saying is that education is to give you knowledge, to identify a gap in the market. And there are so many gaps. However, the main challenge, and I agree with those who have started their own businesses, because I also started a social enterprise, is that regulations and policies are more of inhibitive than enabling. So you need to pay licenses and permits that are more expensive than the capital you actually need to start a business. And that's why in KEPSA we decided to come up with a Youth in Enterprise Forum that brings together all these stakeholders in all sectors to ensure, including the, the youth. In fact, the strategy was formulated by mostly young entrepreneurs. And are these young people from across the country? Because again, there has been a concern about Nairobi-centric approaches. <coughs> Actually, now that's another, um, that's another uh, to answer that question, uh, reminds me of the statement on agribusiness we made before. Understand that agribusiness is not just about production. It's from farm to fork. That's a whole value chain mm -hmm. which needs branding, which needs research, which needs lawyers, which needs uh, creatives. And so we are saying, how do we look at all these value chains? Remember, 70% of actually Kenyan youth are in the rural areas. Yeah? 
We are also looking at policies that will ensure that um, devolution also takes up young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. for economic inclusion. So, so there how do you respond to this, this, this comment that has been coming out, especially after we aired um, Kevin Ocheng's story, and then him getting all these calls. You said 500 calls is what he got. So it's not that the jobs are not there. So is it a game with the private sector, within the private sector, to have this stereotype create a sense of lack within employment? Is it, is it a game that we're seeing? Because how do you explain how one person can, so sharp, has applied for hundreds of jobs, his story is aired on TV, the same companies are now calling him. So it's not that the jobs are not there. Okay, Lorna said, she's a small business. I'm sure she's a small business. She's a growing business. She's a young entrepreneur. She, how many CVs did you say you look at? Uh, about 5,000. That was her. Juliet. Oh, sorry, it was yeah. Juliet. It, you said about 5,000 CVs. It means that there is a lot of demand than there is supply. And on top of that, there is a disconnect. So what we are trying to do through the youth and uh, YEFO, as we call it, Youth in Enterprise Forum, is actually, as we speak, we are actually working on it, whereby all these companies that offered uh, Kevin a job will actually now send those opportunities now to send those opportunities to Yes, to, now yes. To, they will send them to the KEPSA secretariat, and then through YEFO, we will actually be able to spread out that information because their challenge has been um, a disconnect and of course us now realizing as KEPSA that the private sector is actually the epicenter of employment creation and enterprise creation. Mm -hmm. Now we are willing to take a, 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 a lead in actually sorting out these uh, challenges. Christopher Donald. Before they come in, one last quick question. Can you and every other organization in Nairobi in Kenya that are creating jobs come together? and have one combined front as a result of what we are seeing now. Because some are concerned that with everyone out there trying to provide these opportunities, it can be confusing <coughs> duplication of duty. Is, is there something that KEPSA could do to sort of streamline so that young people know if I go to this one place, I'm guaranteed a uh, possibility of many job options? To simply answer your question, that is what we are launching in the next two months okay. through the Youth in Enterprise Forum. That's the plan. That is the plan. Thank you. All right. I know Donald and Christopher wanted to respond to something. And our panel are itching. So uh, yes. let's get those two and then we come to get reactions from our panel. I think we are missing the point. Yeah, we, we are only talking about... Just sorry, repeat your first... You think we are missing the point. Yeah. Go we're ahead, explain about why. graduates, yeah? In this country, yeah? education too is a privilege. Mm. Not only jobs. Like Padare, where I come from. She's talking about agribusiness, yeah? I tell you, my neighbor doesn't know what that term means. But he also needs a job, a job to, put, to, to put money, to put food on the table. That's, like I was saying, yeah? There are job of us. Kevin could only pick one. There are more job of us for him. From far, far, far wide, from Kiambu County to Migori County, yeah? Wow. Those guys called, they actually called. Like Migori governor, yeah? Those guys actually call. I believe that we, we need to do certain things. How does that make you feel? I feel bad. Like, yeah, that clip yeah, that uh, was aired on Sunday, it mentioned that we shared the room with three other guys. Let me tell you, I'm the least qualified in that house. Yeah? Mm. There's another one. It's called Caleb. He was a, he's a Nairobi University graduate. Same situation. Same situation. In the same parking, I also work in the same parking, where the story was aired. Yeah. Goodness. There's one called Charles. He's also a university graduate. In fact, they were with Kevin at Maranda. Yeah. I believe we need to do uh, first things first. Yeah. There are 500 jobs. Yeah. Kevin only. Let's say, for example, there are 501 jobs. Yeah. Kevin took the one. We have 500. How do you make sure that all these are the 499 guys, uh, jobs? Uh, uh, what about the 499? This is what we do. This is what we do. Okay. Uh, do, I don't Employment understand. bureaus. Yeah. Employment bureaus. Yeah. They can either be private or public. Yeah. Employment bureaus matches the employers and the employees. Yeah. Number two, we need to create to develop rural areas. Mm. Yeah. So what, 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 where does the government come in? Yeah. Develop the social amenities. Yeah like roads, yeah? Make the rural areas be attractive, yeah? Okay. Number three, we need a relevant, yeah? Education system. Wow. Like, for example, in my case, yeah? 
I'm, an, uh, I'm a college dropout. I was doing CPA and I was taking myself, I was taking myself through college. And uh, somewhere along the way, uh, it just became too much. It became overwhelming mm. and I stopped it altogether. Overwhelming because of cost or because of the workload? What overwhelming, why? What I was getting yeah, from the Miyaga jobs that uh, I used to do was not enough. Was not enough to uh, uh, meet my daily needs okay. and still pay for my fees. Number uh, another thing. Yes, and, and, and allow me to interrupt you. Mm. Um, we hear that you may have received job offers yourself. Have you? Can you confirm that? And would you go back to school now if, if you have a salary that enables you to do that? If I get a job, yeah. Do you, have you gotten a job? I've gotten two offers. Two. As a result of your association with Kevin? Yeah, I've gotten two offers. In fact, after this interview, I'll be meeting Someone. a potential employer. Okay. Yeah. The first thing I'm going to do here eh, is I'm going to go back to school. Okay. Hold yeah. it there because we want to allow others to speak. Thank you for sharing that, Donald. Uh, the issue is not getting 5,000 applications because you requested us to apply. You know we are so many outside here without a job. The issue is how you deal with us who took our fare, like the last time I was in Sierra County. From here, I hustle for the 3,000, I go there, come back, not even a response. Not even telling me that you did not qualify for this job. Mm -hmm. Not even telling me that these and these, these people are taken. How do you deal with the rest? Yes, you've taken the five, but how do you deal with the 4,995? Because mm -hmm. those people have spent a lot, and we passed through a lot to even get that money that we are coming through there. Ju Juliet, there's a frustration also, especially with, since we aired the first class betrayal. One of the other parts of the conversation is the fact that um, there is taking advantage of young people because you know as an employer that there are no jobs, you will pay someone peanuts. Hence frustrating young people more than you wonder why you have a depressed society. How do we address that scenario? Why it is that you, know, you can get an employment but then your salary doesn't even match the sort of job you're doing. It's just too much. So you have a frustrated young people as well. Okay, from my experience, I do both uh, recruitment and also manage uh, HR for small businesses. I think there's a lot of blame game coming from one side and we are not addressing the core issue. Uh, the people who are coming out of the education system, they are exam takers and crammers and they're not problem solvers. For example, I'll call somebody for an interview um, so I'm a small business. You needed to have researched about my company. I need you because there's a problem I need to address. There's Google now. The information is free. Why can't you just Google and tell me your plan, what you can do for my business for the next three months? But because you're entitled, the first thing people, when, when they come and um, do an interview, they introduce myself, Mr. my name is XX, I have a degree. I don't want to hear the degree. I'm a small business. Tell me what you can do for me. Okay, then how do you answer to the aspect of young people getting peanuts? Even in terms of peanuts, I'll, inter I'll, I'll invite you into my company because I want to see the kind of person that you are. You want to tell me if you solve for me a problem. First of all, I did not start a business to suffer and to have, um, to, to uh, actually I started a business to have peace of mind. Mm -hmm. If you can solve that problem for me, mm. I will add additional salary. Mm. In some companies, what I've seen is people have even, um, if I see you're a good em uh, employee, I'll even buy for you a house, I'll buy for you a car, I'll make your life settled so you can make my life more settled as well. Okay, yeah. okay. Lee, you've been itching to come in. Lon, I'm coming to you, I can see you also want, uh, Lee, lots has been said here, your response, and, yeah, yeah. and Donald is saying HR yeah. managers, please yeah. give let, us let, feedback. Yeah, yeah, let, let me just, uh, Donald talked about, uh, he's been uh, looking for a job for a long time, but uh, he has also been doing some uh, odd jobs, you said odd jobs. What I would like to advise uh, Donald is that uh, those odd jobs, and uh, the things that uh, he does on the side and bring an income is what he can be able to repackage mm -hmm. and make it an opportunity that can create a full-time job. So that uh, you drop the idea that uh, this is a, an inferior opportunity because there is a superior opportunity that will come one day. This alternative that Donald has right now, mm -hmm. that he's able to make a living uh, today, uh, and those odd ones, it is the same ones that create a good opportunity for you. So many young people need to identify what they call odd jobs as they wait could it really be where the job is turn it around make it uh, a presentable repackage yourself and offer that service to but, the but, community but can i ask you this yes he's he, he is looking at the value of how his job is perceived in his family 
he's not the, the one called to speak at a, at a family gathering yeah, yeah, because yeah. your kazi anafanya asile inajulikana yeah, yeah. his peers as well he's dealing with so much pressure from society yes. that even when he's doing that odd job he's being asked how japata kazi bado how yeah. do you deal and, and with that that is the society mindset with it. we said we, we need to change all of us that we think that success is when you have a good job you're in a good office and you wear a tie and a suit and that is when you have a job we would like the kenyan people to know that a job is about bringing income and, and be able to meet your livelihood. And it can happen uh, in the rural area, it can happen in the counties and everywhere we are. So uh, let us look for opportunities around us. Uh, looking at the statistics, today the number of jobs that are within formal jobs, like Donald you have mentioned and many other of the young people here, they are uh, a total of uh, 2.5 million. Over all the years, today, 2.5 million Kenyans are the ones who have got a formalized job in the description of today. Out, Out of, of whom, maybe 50 one, million Yeah, 1.5 1, 1 million are the ones that are 1.8. 1.8 million are within the private sector, formal enterprise, while 700,000 are within government, public sector. Mm -hmm. So that adds to 2.5 million. Now, if you look at the kind of uh, scale of challenge we have, a million people a year, you can see that uh, they are not destined for this formal job. The expansion of this formal job per year out of the 2.5 million every year percentage, we get about 10% uh, increase on a yearly basis, which means that uh, the maximum expansion you can get is about 250,000 jobs, yet a million people are coming. So you can see there is already an automatic gap of 750,000. Why isn't our job so, creation going? Now, let, let me come now where I'm going. Uh -huh. So where are we going to get uh, the, the fastest road to market for more jobs that can handle the scale of the problem we have? It's going to be in the micro, small and medium enterprise. That is where we are going to have the fastest and, and quicker expansion. Today, the number of people engaged within the micro, small and medium enterprise, that whole value chain, are 15 million in Kenya, 15 million. And therefore, it means that expanding that sector gives you the highest opportunity for expansion of jobs. Okay. So as a nation, we need to invest and take big attention on, on that capacity building and ensuring that the micro, small and medium enterprise across all the value chains, across all the mm -hmm. sectors, both at the national and county government work, including a lot of resources and uh, creating also decent jobs. Because okay. it's not just about jobs, it's also about decent jobs. That's what's going to make yeah. sense. Yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me bring in Lona before we take a break. Lona, Jijali has, has jobs. I'm told at least 400, if not more. <laughs> what has been, where are they being advertised and what has been your experience as people apply? Are there any mistakes being made? Are there mm -hmm. any lessons that you mm -hmm. know, our viewers can learn and, and our panel, yeah. our audience here? Okay, so just a correction. We don't have jobs. What you do is we train young people on how they can find jobs okay. or start successful businesses or even improve their current businesses. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, the, the story of um, his roommate, it made me really, really sad because I could really identify with that. Because what happens is when you join the education system, you're told if you get an A, you'll get a job. So that's what a lot of people work for, yeah? And that's what he was able to get. He had an A. So by logic, he has an A, he should have a job. And then they, we come out and we find actually that's not the situation at all. Yeah? And then on the other hand, we have uh, businesses who are looking for people to hire. And then they get maybe 100 candidates and out of those 100, they're thinking, I can maybe hire just two from this because only two have shown that they can do the job. So you see what, what is now happening is that we have a skills gap whereby we have people coming out of school who have this set of skills, but the, the employment sector is looking for a different set of skills. Yeah? So now what happens, that, that's how the mismatch happens, whereby we have um, companies that have so many jobs available, but they can't find the right person. And then you have young people looking for the jobs, but they're not getting picked for the jobs. And that's why we now have programs like Jijali, where we try to bridge this gap, where we're trying to give young people the skills they need to be able to get those jobs or to be able to start their own businesses. Um, and Maybe now there's some hope because now we have the competency-based curriculum um, coming up. But the fact of the matter is there are still graduates that are going to be um, 
going through 844, completing their 844 education um, for the next couple of years. So the question is, how can we support them and how can we make sure that um, we are providing them with the skills that they need to get the job? Rana, how much of an, our attitude yeah. contributes to a successful job hunt? I would actually say attitude contributes so much because um, apart from uh, you know, there's a, uh, there's a positive attitude, but I would look at it of more of the proactive attitude. So, for example, in her case, she was saying um, she's interviewing someone and she's asking them, how can you solve my problem? So what happens is most people just um, collect their, their certificates they have and go for the job. Because, again, as I mentioned, the mindset that we've been told is that if you have the certificates, you'll get the you job. You get the job. It's yeah, automatic. but the thing is, you need to go further than that. So you need to look at her company and look at, okay, so what challenges is she facing? She's, ha she's looking for someone in marketing. What are her marketing challenges? So I do my research. I see, okay, maybe her Facebook, I can do this and this. So when I go to the interview, I'm not just telling her, these are my papers. I'm telling her, um, number one, I spotted a gap here in your Facebook marketing. I would suggest you do this and this. I would also suggest you do this and this. Whereby you're showing what you can do as opposed to just bringing your papers to the interview. Okay. Yes. I think we are due for a break, and I know there, there are Christine those who wanted to come in. Wanted to jump in. Yes. Okay. Let's take that before we take the break. So um, I basically just want just put the mic closer to your mouth. Go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to support what Juliet said in terms of uh, people don't know how to the youth don't know how to package themselves, and then I would not blame the education system, but. I feel like part of it is the education system that we have. Okay, let me, let me ask you to pause. Let's switch the mics. Just pass the mic to her. I think we're having a, a slight challenge with that one. Go ahead, start again. So you're saying people need to learn how to package themselves or repackage. Yes. How did you repackage yourself? Are, are you now very different from the person you way, previously were, even way, maybe way, how you dress? Yeah, way, way different. Um, I realized after sending out my CV to very many companies and applying for very many jobs, the reason why I probably never get that call back is because my CV was not standing out. And we need to know that um, with the kind of education system that we have, we, the education system does not equip the youth with the right skills to stand out in the job market. So you have to go through maybe sometimes look for an extra thing, an extra uh, training for you to know how to repackage yourself, how to customize your CV, and then you see... Your, the brother next to you says he has repackaged himself over and over again. Mm -hmm. What um, is he missing in your experience? In my experience, um, I've realized that you, there are so many things that we put on our CV that are not relevant. So you see someone will say, ah, I live in Nevasha, I've done this and that, and it's so relevant. Just make sure that everything that is skills based or maybe your best achievements that are according or are related to that job that you're applying for stand out and be like more proactive and uh, people the youth need to be very good in self-learning so that they are able to know that if i'm applying for this particular job these are the only things that they should see on my cv and hence i should be able to stand out as well maybe with the hr Higgs, maybe next time we should have a cv writing class that's right that's we, we should probably do that next point. time we need to take a commercial break but a feedback do we have any feedback mm, okay we do have some let's All take right. a look okay some tweets um kilonzo you say we cannot all be entrepreneurs not all of us are endowed that way society needs professionals we are qualified employers a cry there from bob kilonzo seven please employers angela nemo says first class betrayal continues as seen with all these private companies that are now reaching out to kevin ocheng so where were the jobs all along and the initiative to create a self-employment workforce who will work for us all right still okay. sticking to twitter Dennis, you say youths are told to start businesses while retired senior public servants and CEOs are still applying for jobs. What an irony. So Dennis asking, why are see retired civil servants still applying for jobs? Okay, D. Kamade says, it's really a crisis. We talk of the youth being unemployed, but we must understand that there's also another cohort of population who have been on the tarmac for over decades. They have qualifications and experience, but cannot access any gainful employment. So these are not jobless youth. These are jobless mm. uh, middle-aged Mm -hmm. sort of people mm -hmm. go ahead all right john good morning you say i just finished my studies in april this year even getting an industrial attachment was a hectic experience Le experience rather leave alone a job how are we expected to have the skills employers are seeking if they don't offer us a chance my goodness uh, i want to let our panel audience know we have so many sms's here a lot of people weighing in on this conversation mose kimadi says we need to have a conversation around what do we do 
with the many young people who are seemingly unemployed. In my opinion, this is a ticking time bomb. And the sooner we take our youth seriously, the better for the country. A ticking time bomb, not only for the country, but the African continent as well. Um, Chuchir, you say Kenyan culture should also be more entrepreneurial. Those in employment should strive to own businesses. This will create space for unemployed graduates in the job market. Youth should also build their careers early through volunteering. So Zinzi, when are you starting your business? You are taking someone's... <laughs> spot. That's what he's saying. You and I, we should go out there. Hilary Ngasura says that is idealistic. Interesting how the employed are telling the youth to start businesses. How will one start a business without capital? Right. Most graduates have skills, knowledge, etc., but they don't come from a well-connected family. That's the difference. There is a conversation. There's also a point on how it's the same politicians that are employed telling us to look to be entrepreneurs. Okay. Um, Onya. Onyango Evans 95. Yes, you say um, connection is the key to success currently, but as Mandela once put it for education, in a country where youth even apply for attachment in an organization and still receive no feedback, when you try to follow up, you will get a letter still intact. What do you expect? Nobody opened your letter. Okay, let's take the last two before you take that break. Skarsky 2. There are jobs. The problem is the youth. Youth have set high expectations for themselves. Some say after graduating, they can't work for some salaries offered by companies. Everybody wants a six-figure salary. Forgetting about the process. There's a process. Okay, Dan. Dan, you say, unfortunately, the government of Kenya has cut all to all possible avenues. An ordinary Kenyan can get employment. Nepotism, corruption, and greed has blocked the poor from rising to better social economic status. All right, and one last one. Uh, Wangari KM, what the HR lady is saying is right on mark. Uh, come to interviews with ideas and solutions, not with your degree. After all, like the Kepsa lady says, education is the means for you to be able to generate ideas, not the golden ticket to automatically getting a job. All right. We need to take a commercial break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Keep sending us your SMSs on 22422 or tweeting us directly at Citizen TV Kenya. When we come back, I'd love to hear from Lee specifically on how much of corruption is leading to many young people being unemployed. We'll be right back.